good day to one and all this is dr sivaram of inoindices.com i am going to present here the asian session live market analysis webinar which i was supposed to give yesterday but due to some other reason i was not able to present it today 11th of november i am presenting it between 5 and 5:30 gmt and i will also explain the derived forecast for this particular week 10th to 14th of november and also the levels at which the currencies could swing during this particular week and also we will do the market reading in order to find out what the players intend to do during this particular day so first of all we will go to that of the derived forecast so yesterday you had noticed that we are in the second week of uh, uh, sorry we are in the second week of november so yesterday you had noticed that week beginning falls more they had done it and so we will start with that so we are in the second week of november so from now on the market is expected to show the trending move so instead of the trend reversal will come across the trending move the forecast says that it will be an upward trending move so let us see whether the market is going to exhibit the upward trending move so if you watch on friday that is when the non farm payroll was released and non farm payroll was less than expected than that of the market but still euro and gbp gained nominally level and quickly made the drop and formed the new low created the panic condition to that of the traders and euro came down to 1.2350 area and gbp came down to 1.5790 area which has created the bearish feel for that of the traders and also those who are holding the long positions hoping that there could be a recovery in the case of euro and gbp they become afraid and liquidate the long positions and slowly during that of the us session the players started gaining the levels so we know very well that they try to create the market sentiment and act against that of the traders once they commit the positions so after the drop of the market to that of the all time low so immediately the players started making the lower level consolidation with a downward stop and from the 1.25 area in the case of euro and 1.59 in the case of gbp and then subsequently when they just made the downward moves immediately the traders started anticipating for the big drop in the case of euro and gbp and after that of the non farm payroll people thought that uh see the employment conditions have not improved much in order to uh, expect euro and gbp to go down in a big way but later on the players made the downward move showed the all time new uh, low of 1.2350 area and then subsequently gained it during that of the late year session then monday yesterday they just gained the levels during the start of the japanese session and made the slide during that of the late japanese session and also made the small dip and gained the levels during that of the european session and your session they made only the swing up slide move instead of a form up move yesterday and so they have been making the low level consolidation with a brief downward dip in the market and now today what they are expected to do that is 11th of november swing and slide is expected during that of the japanese session and that could create for the uh, uncertainty to that of the traders that the market might come down then they are expected to make the swing and rise move during that of the us european session and swing and form up during that of the us session slowly they will gain the levels from that of the european session and then tomorrow again they are expected to wednesday they are expected to form up during japanese session and make a nominal slide during that of the european session and make a good rise during that of the us session then from wednesday it might become visible for the traders that 
Iro and Jib, we are expected to gain levels during that year and time. Then afterwards, they are expected to make the gaining moves during the 13th and 14th, and that could be the visible gains in the market. Then third week in November, 17th and 21st November, also we will come across the other major gaining moves in the market. So they are all the expected market moves in this particular week, and even though. We have seen that USD gaining in a big way during this time. I have been explaining it that many people call it as a sleeping giant. So why the players just liquidate the long positions in the case of other majors and induce other majors to make a big drop in order to accumulate lower level buys. At that time, we'll come across the sleeping giant US dollar will wake up and make. Some havoc in the market, and immediately people will be, become afraid of the US dollar or afraid of the giant, and later on it will go to the top sleep. Then you will find other majors will start gaining the levels. What ultimately what is happening that the players make the drop in the case of other majors and accumulate the buy positions because unless and otherwise they don't make the buy at the lower level. There is no point in gaining the levels and booking profit. So only when they take the buy positions, they'll be able to gain the levels and book profit. That is what they will do it. So after creating the bearish field, they are buying in the case of Euro and GBB. And after creating the bullish field, they will try to offload the other majors. So this is what they do every time. And but traders somehow uh, get misguided. Due to various other factors, and they start worrying about the economic conditions of various countries rather than themselves, and later on lose the money in the market, thinking that what is visible is true, and we have to find out what is the hidden agenda of the player, and then try to trade accordingly. And see, we have the limited equity, so we cannot just like that make a counter trade against them, and. You know that it will appear like a falling knife. At that time, we cannot go and catch it. So what you have to do is you can buy, but keep the hedge order to limit the risk of 30 pips. And in the event, if they drop further down and the position is hedged and the hedging is making profit, then understand that they are making extended downward stop. Keep stop at entry in that hedging order. Hedge order, and then once the market reverses, your hedge will be closed, and they will start gaining the level. Then you can keep another hedge order and trail it up. Otherwise, you can book profit in the hedge. Keep another hedge order below that and start trailing it upward. So this way, if you try to do it using the trading strategy, then you will be able to really do the bottom fishing. Otherwise, it will give the impression that it is a falling knife, and you cannot. Risk it to capture it, so that is what uh, most of the traders find it, and, and immediately what they think is, okay, there might be a pullback, like a dead cat bounce back, and then later on they will try to take sell positions, and probably they will make a small dip and give them the profit. And once the traders think that okay, every pullback we can sell, and there will be more profit. Then later on, the players will continue to gain the levels and induce them to do the short covering. So what they give as small profits in swing trades, they grab it in no time, just like that. Once the traders commit more positions on the sell side, so this is what expected during this particular week. So when they are doing the lower level consolidation with the downward stop and move. <clears throat> Understand that they will try to gain the levels quickly, so it, it is better to avoid sell and buy trade at the bottom most level. Now, with regard to the levels in which the currencies are trading, euro is expected to trade from that of 1.2450 to 1.28 level. It is expected to gain with a lower level swing and rise. So it's so so far 1.2418 and 1615 as the low, and it is expected to gain the levels quickly. And 
1.5840 uh, is the low they have shown. 1.5875 was the estimated low, and they are expected to go above that and start gaining the level to that of 1.62. And in the case of yen, they are holding around 115, and they are expected to slowly come down and trigger the market to make the USD weakening move. At the moment, if you watch that, they are gaining the levels in the case of USDN along with that of Euro and GBB as a contrarian move in order to handle the yen crosses. And later on, they will dump USDN just to trigger the market for Euro and GBB to bounce upward. Then in the case of CHF, 96.25 is the estimated low. They came down yesterday to 96.17, and then they are expected to go up to that of 98.50. Last week, they went up to that of 97.75, and this time they will go above that. And you will come across that Euro and GBB are expected to make swing and gain moves, and also USDN and USDCHF. They are also expected to alternatively gain levels. And so they will gain more and drop less, gain more and drop less. That sort of moves, they will do it. So as you come across the gainings in the case of Euro and GBV, corresponding drop may not happen in the case of USDN and USDCH. So avoid doing sell and buy trade in those crosses, N crosses and CHF crosses. Then USD CAD, which is expected to make the range bound swings in these wide range swings, USD CAD, and also the Australian dollar are expected to make the wide range swings uh, till year end. So it is expected to trade in the range of 1.11 to 1.1375 level. So that's what they are trying to consolidate. And last week they went up to 1.1465 and there was an extended upward stop and, and they just held above that of 1.14 in order to induce all short covering and later on they just dumped it in a big way, all using the excuses of the data release, etc. And on Friday, the data release was positive to USD CAD, so they made the drop, and that is being discounted, and today they gained the levels. So ultimately, what you need to understand is, uh, can any fundamental data be short-lived for about a few hours, and later on, uh, the market shows a different move? That means the fundamental is discounted. So can the market discount such fundamental news? Because the fundamental is expected to drive the market. But unfortunately, what happens? The players pretend as if the market is expected to follow the fundamentals and then later on say, no, no, because of technicals, it has bounced back. And then when you think, okay, it is better to follow technicals, then they will say, no, fundamental is going to drive the market. So alternatively, they will use such excuses. Ultimately, what they do is they make such extended stop and moves, create the market sentiment and act against that of the traders from time to time. Especially during that of the month in trend reversal time, they make such big havocs in the market. This time they made all the USD gaining moves. And you know, in that by end of August and September, they made all the USD weakening moves. Euro was trading around 1.40 and GBV was around 1.7150 and things like that created the feel that it is unstoppable. And now you find that they have made the USD gaining move and again, which gives that impression that the fall in the case of Euro and GBV, you may not be able to stop. That is how they create the market sentiment. Ultimately, what we need to understand is making such big moves is very easy for them in order to induce the traders to commit wrongly and then grab their money. So keep in mind that the pip moves are due to that of the leverage trading in the market. And so if you try to relate it to that of the fundamentals, then you may have to use the magnifying glass to see the fundamentals and then accordingly you will be able to see the moves also in the market. But 
then you will get more and more confused when you try to relate the fundamentals to that of the technicals when you use a magnifying glass and look into that of the fundamentals go into the depth of the fundamentals and by the time you understand okay this is what going to happen exactly the opposite will happen in the market then you will stop following such excuses and the players use only the fundamental data release time as the trigger time to the market so in the case of australian dollar they came down to 0.8550 level and then this time they are expected to go to that of 0.8889 level and they are doing the lower level consolidation so in the case of aussie and canadian dollar they will be making wide range swings and the rest of the currencies they will make the upward move so euro and chibi we are expected to make the usd weakening move and usdn and usd ch are expected to make the usd gaining move as a result the us dollar index might showing the higher level consolidation and the people might be confused what is happening and why the market is not reacting in terms of us dollar index so many of the people they have been tuned to follow us dollar index to take positions in the market and they will find that okay they are not related and you know from time to time they will try to relate the stock market with the forex market the forex market with the commodity market and later on you will find it is related to bond market that is why you find that every time you come across a lot of such coincidences with the charts and immediately they will try to talk more about it frequently as a result immediately people will think that okay market is following uh, euro is following dow jones and later on they will say euro is following yen and later on they will say euro is following gold and things like that so they will continue to confuse the traders so they won't be knowing what to use it make a relative comparison but ultimately we have to understand there is no such relative moves in the market and when they are making the contrarian move where is the question of relative moves now you find that euro is showing positive net change and gbp is showing negative net change what is the correlation you come across here this sort of swings they are bound to make it and euro is in positive and usdn is also in positive net change this is how they make the move moves as a contrarian moves in the market in order to handle the crosses so if you try to think that the market you will be able to correlate and then use the signal from the other market to, in order to take positions you might be disappointed so avoid correlations because ultimately the players make such moves in the market depending upon the traders taking sell and the buy positions so if motor sell positions are in the case of euro gbp cross for that matter then they, what they will do they will make a small dip in the case of euro and again in the case of gbp and induce euro gbp to come down or make a gain in the case of euro and then also drop in the case of gbp as a result euro gbp will go up and that way they try to hit the stops so it is a question of only trying to hit the stops of the traders so if traders have committed more positions buy positions in the case of euro buy positions in the case of gbp they'll make a drop even though the uh, data released from that of euro is positive to that of euro they may still make a downward move because the traders continue to take buy positions so that is how they act in the market so keep in mind Uh, the players are here to make money and they don't have any sentimental attachment to any of those currencies and they hold all the reserve currencies in us dollar if you go and check up with the banks then you will be able to understand that they keep all the reserves only in us dollar so they will never make us dollar the weakest they may make the us dollar weakest and you know in 2008 people were talking that us dollar is a toilet paper and there is how no they introduce such terminologies in the market and immediately people will sp spread it with a true sense and thinking that that is how it is going to be and now 
what they are going to say when you are always so strong. Now, with regard to the initial lows and the highs set today, you reformed the low 1.2418 and they just breached it by three pips and gone to that 1.2418 and 1.2441 is the high. And when compared to yesterday, they have been doing it only about 50 pips range. And in the case of GBB 1.5840 is the low. They came down to 1.5836 and then come up a little bit, but still not gone above that of 5840. 1.5857 is the high. So as expected, they are making a small slide during the, the Japanese session, during the late Japanese session. And in the case of Yen, 114.64 is the low, 114.01 is the high. They just breached the high about 34 pips and started coming down. So this is an upward stop and in order to make a downward move. And also they just gained the levels in the case of Euro and USDN. As a result, Euro, uh, Euro Yen will be showing a positive net change here, about 58 pips. And later on, they will try to make a downward move in the case of USDN and use it as a trigger for Euro and GBB to go up. Then in the case of CHF, 9670 is the low and 9686 is the 84 is the high, initial high, and they just breached it by two clips to go on up to 9686 and come to 9681. So you can see that spread is very narrow and they are expected to consolidate here and slowly gain the levels in the case of CHF. Then Canadian dollar, the low was 1.1368 and the high was 1.1382 and they just breached by three pips and start holding near that of the initial high to come down again. And now you find a contrarian move to pips positive net change in the case of CAD and six, five pips positive net change in the case of Australian dollar, mainly to handle the commodity crosses briefly. And Australian dollar, 86.14 is the low, 86.50 was the high. They just breached the high by two pips, 86.52, and come down to 86.24. And so they are expected to again gain the levels in the case of Australian dollar. If needed, they may do a brief down stop and otherwise they may just make a false move up to that of the low and start gaining the levels. So that's what they are expected to make the moves. Slowly they will gain the levels and create, create the market feel that Euro and GBB are bearish but they are expected to gain the levels as a market surprise. So especially from that at the bottom most level, they always make the unassuming gains. So people will be thinking that there may not be any gain and commit more sell positions during small pullback. And later on you find that slowly they will gain the levels and thereby when they slowly gain the level, people will think that Euro does not have a strength to go above 1.25. JVB does not have strength about to go above 1.59. So that is how they will be assuming it, expecting that to come down. But they will continue to gain the levels as an intentional move on the upside, pip by pip, absorbing all the cells because they are doing the bottom fishing. That is how you find that quick moves are false moves in the market and slow moves are the intentional moves. Try to read their intentions whenever they are making the slow moves. So with regard to the trading strategy, you can do the buy and sell trade and still use the hedging order to limit the risk. And once the position makes profit of 25 pips, keep stop at entry in the buy position and remove the hedge order. So there ends the purpose of using the hedge order and later on you can trail the position i mean trail the stop in the profit making position and try to earn and you can also trail the take profit order keep initially at 45 pips and if the going is good you can just move up to 75 pips or 80 pips and then 
try to maximize the profit the market might hit your trailing stop or the trailing take profit order thereby you will be able to maximize the profit without taking a risk and eliminating the risk is most vital thing in the market and now we are using the standard time and many of the people when they are interacting with me and sending the emails and things like that i find that they are not very familiar with it of the daylight saving system and they do not know why they are there is a change in the timing and why the timing is being reversed and probably when the daylight saving system is not in operation in the respective regional countries then they are probably if they are not learnt in geology and they will find it difficult to understand so basically you know in the case of uh, european countries and also the Euro- us and also australia you find that during that of the summer the sun rises early so the daylight comes out early so in order to make use of it they shift their local time the standard time ahead by one hour so they shift the standard time by one hour so that instead of going to the office by 9 o'clock their local time they go to the office by 8 o'clock so if anybody asks them to come by 8 o'clock then they may find that they are coming early instead they all keep the clock mood one hour ahead as a result when they go to the office by 8 o'clock it will show 9 o'clock and that is how they just take advantage of the early rising of the sun and later on when they find that when they shift the clock by one hour uniformly all the people shift it including the working and the non working and as a result you follow the time and which is one hour ahead of their normal time or the standard time that is called daylight saving time and once the winter starts then immediately the sun rises at the normal time so it will be around 7 o'clock or 6:30 and things like that so they may not be able to uh, go to the office early it will be still dark or chill so instead they reverse the clock and go to that of the normal the time like 9 o'clock in the morning so that will be the standard time or the normal time so that is what you come across now the normal time the europe and us are following and for that they have the cut off time and you found last time a difference of one week and earlier they used to follow it simultaneously but later on now they are just doing it as the third week of october and third week of uh, march and here the first week of november and first week of march that is how they do the daylight saving system on and off so now europe and us are following their normal time or the standard time so those who do not follow the daylight saving system in the respective country wherein uh, there is no difference with regard to sunrise not much of a deviation on a daily basis of sunrise they will follow the standard times so for communication purpose during that daylight saving time you may have to contact the people in europe and us one hour ahead and later on when they follow the standard time you have to contact them or the normal time difference so this we need to understand and these are all the three sessions of the day 24 hours day japanese european and us sessions so the gmt times are given gmt time is nothing but the greenwich meridian time which passes closer to that of london and that is considered as the international the common time and from there you can relate it to that your local time and find the time differentials 
and that is why you find that every country has got a tm gmt time differentials and so europe will be plus 1 gmt and us will be uh, minus 10 gmt in new york and minus 12 in uh, other place etc so if you find that if you follow the gmt time then we will be able to understand it is a 24 hours clock and there are some people who call it as uh, 230 pm of the us session 230 pm see am and pm are fine if you are following the local time when you are following the gmt time it is not appropriate to call it as a pm time because when you call it as 1430 then that means it is the later part of the day but when you call it as a 230 pm then it will appear as if it is the evening but it will be the morning in us that means again you are trying to bring that international time to your local time so don't use the vm pm etc instead use the only 24 hours clock and then Use it as fourteen thirty to twenty one thirty is the US time, because many of the people without understanding the basics use it as a misnomer and try to establish that is the correct way of doing it. So I'll come back on Thursday, thirteenth November, day after tomorrow, and try to uh, review the forecast. What I have given it, whether Let's come true or not. So now I'll read the questions which are asked in the chat as well as the question answers window and try to answer to those questions. Okay, George is asked gold. Gold is expected to slowly gain the levels in coming days. That is what he wanted to know, I suppose, because he has simply mentioned gold. And any has got a question. Uh, can we expect euro yen to go down? Yes. When yen is coming down, USD yen is coming down. Then euro yen is also expected to come down. Please tell about yen. Yeah, USD yen will be making a downward move to start with, and later on gain the levels in order to trigger euro and GBP to go up. USD yen will come down. And later on, it will slowly gain along with that of euro and GBP. And every time, if you notice that <coughs> they will gain the levels along with that of euro and GBP, and when euro and GBP are making a drop, corresponding drop will not happen in the yen. Then, then Yasrajit, please tell about. Okay, then. Also, he likes to know bearish or bullish. Okay, keeping the questions very short, that shows uh, that they expect other man to think in line with their expectations. Uh, everybody to enter into their shoes. But uh, he is talking about bearish and bullish in relation to yen, I suppose. Then USD yen is expected to come down. Then Kartik Raja uh, will answer for the question after finished his present okay. Which one is likely to happen first? Yen drop or GBP rise? Yen drop will trigger GBP rise. Then your expectation for daylight saving time is oh, okay explanations. No, it is basically we are supposed to learn it in schools. Since it is not explained, it and if we don't understand why we are using GMT time, why we are using the daylight saving system, etc., uh, you may not be able to really keep it in mind and follow the market. And that is why I thought that even though it might look elementary, still I can explain for the benefit of those who are not 
got the clear cut idea about it okay when will be your twin webinar so i just confirmed to fx street that on 18th tuesday the next week i will give the twin webinar tracking the forex market together then what about crude dilip crude is expected to consolidate and form up not much downside is left then best oil is in downtrend with a new low that is how they do it you no know, and slowly it will also recover they will not drop it is zero sir they will only just create such fields and later on they will gain you know that is a way they buy back against the sense everywhere they use the same technique create the extreme bearishness and buy create the extreme bullishness and sell it to the market hold high and sell to the people and comfortably the traders buy it there you know that is very important see if you are to be cheated you have to be convinced only then you get cheated and unfortunately they continue to cheat and the traders continue to get cheated then any may you please show again slide yeah, i'll show the slide sir uh then abdi how often is the prediction correct i think many of the times the prediction is correct sir and there are variations and deviations i have to admit that uh, because the local conditions from time to time will differ from that of the predictions i will not say that uh, market will move in line with that of my predictions but in the larger extent it will and you will be able to understand it because as long as i am human i may not be able to give 100% perfect forecast and as traders they expect 100% perfect forecast but if there is a question then i may have to be the operator but that is not possible so we are only trying to read the intentions of the players and try to use various techniques to find out what could happen in the market what the future is going to be and in that there will be deviations and nobody will be able to make their forecast 100% but i am making trying to improve on the forecast and trying to make it more and more reliable and hence i emphasize with regard to the trading strategies so that you will be able to limit the risk then lam you mean when euro and gb rise they will hold usd and yeah they will make see they gained about 500 pips in the case of usd and but they made only about 200 pips drop in the case of euro that is how they do it and later on when they gain about 500 pips in the case of euro they will only make a drop in the case of usd yen 200 pips hope you are able to understand that then steve where to find the live market codes okay live market code pages are available even in a fixed street i will just give the this closed Okay, I'll show you later. Then, Munal, uh, for the move that we saw on GBP Friday morning, uh, the bottom low, and then we saw that rise. We know that the players are trying to create market sentiment, but why and how it is so easy for them to reverse the market when the whole sentiment is bearish in retail traders see it is not only the retail traders they trap they trap even the institutional traders the institutions also lose quite a lot of money in terms of volume so basically now i am able to understand your question uh, it is a question of creating the market sentiment when they are trying to create the market sentiment 
you know they have to do it emphatically only then you will be able to really uh, become a fright you no know? and they have to create the feel in such a way and that is possible only by making quick moves in the market so the people the players are capable of doing such quick moves so how they are making such quick moves in the market it is very simple so they simply hold it like this and immediately they will keep say 1.5785 in order and immediately here in the sell side 1.5785 and just place it so immediately what that order 1.5785 will fill all the buy orders here obviously you know many many people enter into the market directly they don't keep limit orders hardly you come across any limit orders and immediately the market and their sell order will hit their own buy order 1.5785 then immediately people will become afraid because it has gone below that of the psychological level 1.58 then afterwards they keep one buy order 1.5835 then immediately the buy order will absorb all the cells coming at the bottom most level what are those cells they are nothing but the stops no at the time of dropping the stops are not filled and they just got exposed and immediately in a fraction of a second their buy orders will absorb all the stops this is how they buy all the stops in the market so you have to understand that they are actually the buyers but they only keep the sell orders and many people in order to misguide the traders say that there is a fight between the bulls and the bears if you ask them a simple question that only if i have a buy position i'll be able to liquidate and book profit in the buy position and for the institution sell and buy trades are not permitted so easily in most of the countries so how they will be able to short sell so if you simply think that there is a tug or fight between the bulls and the bears etc they are all nothing but they create all the nonsense to that of the traders so that the traders think that this market cannot be manipulated because they have to keep telling the traders that the market cannot be manipulated and you come across certain uh, analyst and they will emphatically say that the market cannot be manipulated and it is beyond such manipulations it is a huge 4 trillion dollars and things like that transactions that means he has been paid by the players either directly or indirectly because trying to tell people emphatically a wrong information okay so chill on just one or Okay. Where to find the live market code page? This so this is the link for the live market code page. Probably I'll paste it here. You can get the live market code page in other. I have placed it in chat window. You can save it in your favorite. They trap us continuously and seem that the only way to trade is to read their intentions. Yes, sir. and that is the only way that is why i emphasize on that rather than simply telling whether euro will breach the 1.24 level or whether the bottom is uh, in and things like that that sort of questions i don't answer because uh, we will not be able to find out whether another five tips the players will drop from here because if they come across plenty of stops around that then definitely they will make a downward move and if there are a lot of buy orders of the short sellers they will not dip so we won't be knowing the orders so just to telling 
people that it can make another 10 pips downward or another 10 pip upward it is next to impossible to explain and you can simply say that technically possible technically impossible etc but the players don't respect the technicals and you know that they breach all the pivot points they breach all the supports and create the bearish field and later on accumulate the buy position and gain the levels and then people say that okay the resistance turns support and the market has become bullish and again when you say that market has bullish may become bullish they will start making the slide so they are here to confuse the traders to earn their money so we have to focus on our money rather than the country specific economic conditions uh, is it market trap or it is a natural market rhythm price moving up and down slowly or steadily uh, sir if you call it as market rhythm again no it is a derivation that market cannot be operated and can the rhythm be one sided up to end of the month and reverse it after the month end is there any rhythm is there any natural uh, conditions you find that the summer starts exactly by the month end and the winter start exactly by the month end so it is not natural so then will uh, can you explain the expected move for ch of crosses uh, will the rise in USD CHF and rise in a GBB euro trigger CHF process to gain levels? Uh, as far as the CHF move is concerned, they are slowly and steadily gaining the levels in the case of USD CHF. So whenever there is a big move in the case of euro, they will respond. Responding move will be seen in CHF. Whenever there is a slow move in euro, they may not make corresponding move in CHF and they may make the contrarian move and that is how so gain about 30 pips in euro gain about 30 pips in USD CHF as a contrarian move in order to gain the levels of the case of euro CHF and GBB CHF that is another cross which is being mostly traded and there you have to find how they are handling it so it is a contrarian move GBB showing one pip negative net change which is the USD gaining move and here CHF is showing one pip negative net change which is USD weakening move so by making such contrarian move they handle the European crosses like Euro GBB and Euro CHF GBB CHF these are all the European crosses and those European crosses we need to find what they are doing it in the majors in order to understand them I did not get the link in the live market on the chat. No, I, I just placed it here, the link. You just move down, you'll be able to see. Okay, I have placed it again. Okay. Uh, no more questions in the chat window. I think there are some questions in the question answer window. Probably I'll take about five minutes quickly answer to those questions. Then according to your forecast, Google, is it safe to make a long term sell on yen versus zero? Uh, no, sir, because I told you that USD yen is expected to make upward move and euro is also expected to make upward move. As a result, euro yen will go up slowly. Then, Steve, uh, where to find the net change? Net change is in the live market code page. Here the change is shown. Then another question. EUSEC. Euro CHF floor at 1.20. Do you see a quick parity again? See, <coughs> that is what it is a, a story which was given long back that Euro CH 1.20 is pegged by the respective banks and even when we are talking about Euro CHF is being pegged at 1.20 they made a big drop below that earlier once that news was out and then hit all the stops and recovered it afterwards they are not dropped 
affect it. So, if the players need to hit all the stops, and they, if the traders think that 1.20 is being picked below that the euro CHA will not drop and try to take long positions and keep stop below that, the players are sure to make a downward move, hit their stops and gain that level. So always keep in mind, quick moves are false moves. During such quick moves, you try to enter rather than following all such levels. You know that there have been intervention stories quite long in the case of yen and chf no whenever that yen was making a big drop everybody was talking about the intervention and jap boe will intervene but it came down to 87 and from there it has reversed and nobody is talking about intervention so similarly when chf was also dropping people are talking about intervention and reversed and later on now it's slowly gaining the levels nobody is talking about the interventions every time they will use different stories so if you think the pegged story is still valid now probably you may get disappointed every time they have to create the story and confuse the traders only then the traders will lose money they know very well about it Okay, no more questions. So I take this opportunity to thank everyone and also FX Street for the facilities provided. I'll just show the forecast slide <laughs> of the late comers. Those who have not seen it can make a note of it. Anyhow, it is being recorded and it will be displayed in fxstreet.com uh, there under the archives of the webinars, the recorded webinars. There you can see it on a daily basis. If you want. Otherwise, you can take a screenshot and refer to it for a session wise market moves. And these are all the levels in which the currencies are expected to make moves. And day after tomorrow, Thursday, I'll come back and review whether the market has moved in line with that of our expectations or the forecast or against. So, still, we will try to evaluate everything with an open mind. So always keep that the focus as a guiding factor and use the trading strategy as a prime method by which we'll be able to earn money from that other market. Thank you one and all. See you on Thursday. Wish you all happy trading.